Uh, okay, well, that's all very interesting. I, I, I warrant you that. But wouldn't you wouldn't you agree that some of the some of the laws, you know, when yes. when, when, when Jesus comes, oh, yeah, no camera. No camera. No camera. No camera. They're behind me, though. They're behind me. I'm pointing him. Oh, that's okay, then. But it seems to be uh, me. All right. All right. Um, Please, you were saying. Yeah, but wouldn't you, wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree that some of the Old Testament laws are fulfilled by Jesus? So, what, do you mean, for example, what do you mean fulfilled, by the way? Well, that, for example, uh, the priesthood. What do you mean for, by fulfilled? Well, for example, you know, the fact that you know, there, there are no sacrifices anymore. You know, we don't, you know, Christians or Muslims, Muslims, you don't perform any sacrifices, do you? Yeah, so, you, so both Christians and Muslims don't perform any sacrifices anymore. And, well, and, I do. Uh, can, can, can I, can I, but we, can, can, okay, can, but I, can we I answer that? Can I answer that? Oh, yeah, yeah, but right. you know what I'm going to say. Uh, uh, we, we think uh, Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. Good, good, good. Christians, in, in my view, Christians don't, sorry, Muslim, Christians today don't follow the religion of Jesus, in my view. In many ways, not in all, in some ways they do, but mostly they don't. Let me explain why about the law and the sacrifices. So the temple in Jerusalem. Oh, this is interesting. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. And I respect the fact that you are listening because that, in Speaker's Corner, uh, often we don't listen to each other. I don't mean you and I. I mean people in general don't. Is, but you are listening, I and I'm listening. and I'm doing my best to listen to you. And that's that's great. That's quite unusual to be honest. When you're not mocking me. Sorry. When you're not mocking me, you terrible man. I, I was, I was, <laughs> no, 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 I was pulling not. your leg. Yeah, yeah, I was pulling yeah, your yeah, leg right, 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 about right. the Church of England. Yeah, I thought right, right. it was too right. juicy a leg not to pull it. But, you know. <laughs> All right, go on. I'm not mocking you about. I'm not mocking you about anything else. No, no, I want to hear. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't do any more mocking. Okay. So as I say, Christians today don't tend to follow the religion of Jesus. Muslims are much closer. Let me explain about the sacrifices in the temple bit. So forgive me if you know a lot of you. Probably know a lot of that already. So in in AD in AD 60, as you know, the temple was ultimately destroyed. But by yeah, by the Romans, long after Jesus and the disciples. Before that, the, uh, the temple stood with its sacrifices in Jerusalem. And it's interesting uh, that according to the book of Acts itself, which is the, uh, as you know, the history of the early church, yeah. according to Luke anyway, the disciples continued, or some of them, it names Peter and John, the senior disciples, and one other, I think, continued to uh, participate in the temple sacrifices. Uh, so if you look at, I think it's Acts chapter three, the disciples uh, go up, it says, Luke says, at the hour of prayer, at three, sorry, at three o'clock. Now, three o'clock isn't like, and I've got to mention the Church of England here, but in a serious context. It's right. not like you, you go to church at three o'clock and have some prayers exactly. with the vicar. Isn't that nice? No. The temple is not like the Church of England parish church. It was a center of sacrifice. And at three, at three o'clock in the afternoon was the time of sacrifice in the temple. According to Jimmy Dunn, for example, uh, uh, in his work, he mentions this. And it's not controversial. So the disciples went up to participate in temple sacrifices after Jesus' ascension. In other words, they were continuing to practice as Torah observant Jews. They were. In every respect. They were. So now, now your point is, but we don't do that today. Well, the temple was destroyed. 2,000 years ago, so yeah. it's physically impossible for any Orthodox Jew to participate. Yeah. There are now moves in Jerusalem, sadly, to destroy Al-Aqsa, the, yes. the mosque, mosque, so they can rebuild the third temple yes. in Jerusalem. Well, Christians would be against that. Well, oh, and many American Christians are for it. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> recently in Texas... No, no, we would be, because we think no, Jesus is in England, place. but not in America. No, in in oh, Texas wow. recently, evangelical Christians in America uh, um, bred some no, red, no, red heifers. And the, the actually, this was like a couple of months ago. You actually saw it on TV. These, these are the animals. These are Christians who want to see the temple rebuilt. So they actually bred these uh, spotless, pure red heifers. They are now in Jerusalem, awaiting the rebuilding of the second, of the third temple, I should say, on the site of Al-Aqsa Mosque itself, the third, the third holiest shrine or place in the whole of the Muslim world after Medina and Mecca. Sorry, Mecca, Medina, and then. Can, can, can I just finish what I'm saying? Uh, so, um, so this is in America the the Zionist. Christian movement is almost like the same thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the most powerful supporters of Zionism are Christians, Christians in that. America. Jesus yeah, England, Christians. English Christians tend to be much more reasonable. <laughs> um, but American ones have got the power. So coming back to the temple. So according to the, the disciples and Jesus' own practice, they did believe in temple worship. They participated in the temple rites. 
and when Jesus left the scene, they still continued that. Now, why did it stop? It wasn't just because of the structure of the temple in AD 60. Uh, it was also because Paul himself, in his letters, declared in some places that this is no longer the religion that Christians should follow. So he was a novel bidder, what we would call a, 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 a bidder, an innovation in the religion. He departed from the religion of Jesus and his own disciples and created a new Gentile religion focused on the worship of Jesus himself. Jesus himself didn't preach the worship of himself, he preached the worship of the one God. And he was asked in, in, John, in Mark's Gospel, he was asked, Mark chapter 12, what is the greatest commandment? Or what is the greatest commandment according to Jesus? Every Christian, every Christian always says what you said. It's the wrong answer. It's the wrong answer. It's always the wrong answer. Well, from the Old Testament. No, no, no. You, no. This is a serious point. It's a learning curve for all of us here, by the way. And I'm addressing Muslims here. Whenever you ask this question, and I'm not being mocking here, this is a, it's an observation. When you ask them what marks the earliest gospel, has Jesus answered to the question, what's the greatest command? They always say what you say. And it's always the wrong answer. <laughs> Always, a hundred percent of the time, well, well, I, I can say, they I say that, that. So the correct answer is, what is the greatest command? According to Jesus, he quotes the Shema from Deuteronomy, which is, "Hear, O Israel." There's no, other the, no. Okay. Hear, okay. <laughs> very touchy. Because you're <laughs> not. Modern man. <laughs> Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Now, isn't it interesting that if you look at the 112th surah of the Holy Quran, Quran, we find exactly the same statement about the unity, the Ahad, or Ahad in Hebrew, Ahad in Arabic, where the Quran itself is endorsing and reaffirming the unity and, and singleness of God himself in exactly the same language that Jesus uses and Moses. But Christians say, when asked about God, they'll say, well, he's three persons in one God. They do not affirm the unity and oneness of God. We would say he's... One, but that's just what I just said. <laughs> they do not repeat what Moses and Jesus, peace be upon them, said, and, and Muhammad, upon whom be peace, also endorsed. So Christians have, have created a different understanding of God, which is no longer Tawheed, pure monotheism. The monotheism of Jesus, the monotheism of Muhammad, the monotheism of Moses, peace be upon them all. You have created a different concept of God. Well, it, well, it, has, to, well, it has to be. I mean, we, we could be wrong. Let me say that, you know, be out there. But obviously, if Jesus is divine, then that, you know, then God has to be at least two, if not three persons, if he is divine. So if we're, if we're wrong about that, okay. But why didn't Jesus teach what you believe about God? Well, of course, we Christians... I mean, it's a basic question, isn't it? You expect yeah. Jesus to teach <laughs> Christian theology, we, but he didn't. He didn't say, God is, uh, I, because I am divine, God is divine, and the Holy Spirit is divine. Then there should be... Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, can, can, I, can I just finish? So, uh, why didn't Jesus answer the question as to what Christians themselves believe? this man, because he needs to... No, I, I'm, I'm not educating anyone here. I'm just trying to share what the, what the Gospels, your Gospels... Why didn't Jesus... Jesus, I'm touching, oh, <laughs> why didn't Jesus actually answer the truth then, well, we according would, to your religion? We, well, we would say that you know, the, the, the disciples and others were very slow to understanding, and he could he could only teach them as much as they could understand. And therefore, for example, in John 16, he said he would, he promised the Holy Spirit then to lead them into all truth, you know, the, all the truth that they did not understand. And that's why we have the Gospels, and then the Acts of the you know, Epistles. But the Gospels men. are written long after Jesus. Absolutely. Well, yes, but they were still all written in the, in the, in the lifetime of the eyewitnesses. I don't think they were at all, but that's a different well, subject. I thought, I thought no, 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 I, I, didn't, I didn't dispute it, because there's so much we can argue about. I don't, okay. But, but, well, the, but the point is this. Would, I would say, if, if, I, would say if, I may be wrong, yeah. we, would, we would say that they were all written between roughly 50 Mark to 90 John. Mm, like yeah, I don't think any disciples were around in, in the 90s. I think they're all dead, well, we, long dead. Well, but that's not that's oh, well, irrelevant. That's even better. It's you know, irrelevant. My argument, because that, you know, that makes them, okay. that makes the. So the but the point earlier. is that well, when Jesus spoke about this crucial issue about who God is, His nature, He said something that is not only very Jewish but very Islamic about who Jesus was. He stressed the unity and singleness of God. Echad in is a Hebrew word, exactly the same word in the Quran. 
the Quran very cleverly. It's, been, it's been what someone at Oxford called precision theology in 120, Surah 112. What is it? It's very laser-like going in and very carefully reaffirming the correct understanding of Tawheed found on the lips of Moses and Jesus themselves, peace be upon them, over against the later Christian distortion and corruption of the, of the, of the concept of God. So the Quran is actually siding with Jesus over against the Christian understanding. And I think theologically that is precisely right. And saying that, oh well, Jesus didn't speak about this because they were slow, no one's going to be slow. If, if you understand the oneness of God and you introduce another person saying, well actually, in the divine unity there are other persons. There's, there's the Holy Spirit. Oh, and there's Jesus as well. There's actually three of you, even though no prophet had ever said that before in the history of Israel. Isaiah, for example, in his great uh, chapters, uh, monotheistic chapters, Isaiah 40 or 44 onwards, he goes on and on about the concept of God, the, the unity of God, the Tawheed of God. He never mentions three persons or three people in Godhead. And then he's speaking directly from God. If this had been the truth about God, someone would have mentioned it before, and no one did. Well, we, Neither Jesus nor any of the prophets. We Christians may be wrong, but we, 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 our understanding is that when God says, you know, let us create man on our own image, he, there is, there are, there is God talking to God and, and, what, and what's going on there. And when John opens his gospel, you know, say, in the beginning was the Word, was the Logos. So our understanding that, where, you know, that, that John is picking up on the Genesis account, and therefore John's understanding of the, you know, the two or three, the three persons of, uh, of the Trinity is an echo from so Genesis one, for example. Now we. Okay, we the, the, pro the, well, the problem with that is, is that even the Quran has God speaking in different pronouns, I, we, we and so on. So, so, so it, no one, I don't think anyone's ever seen or suggested that, that Muslims believe God is a multi-personal God with lots of different uh, de divinities within the Godhead. No Muslim, that, that is completely prohibited. Why? Because it's, it's a way of speaking of, as you have just said, of God's majesty. It's not yeah. meant to be taken in this polytheistic sense where there are many, many well, gods. Because you could say a Hindu, a Hindu could say a Hindu could say I believe in a million gods, exactly. but I'm a monotheist because um, because I because it's just one god with a million a million gods. And this is not monotheism. This is not monotheism. This is polytheism. Hindu claimed that Hindu claimed that we believe in one god. There is even one god. Many different claims. Hindu claimed. Have you heard of Avatar? Have you heard the word Avatar before? In the film Avatar, have you heard the word Avatar? These are in some in some Hindu. This is the way they talk. Now, I'm not saying I'm not going to get into about Hinduism, but but the point is that uh, a figure is a way of speaking does not indicate polytheism. I think that's a mistake. Uh, but Jesus himself, anyway, affirmed the unity and singleness of God in the Shema, which goes against uh, 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 any Trinitarian understanding by definition, by the very de semantic meaning of the term. Well, that's interesting. Uh, and so Muslims, again, when it comes to the food laws, when it comes to the divine law, when it comes to the concept of God, it is Muslims today. I would submit who are truly following the path of Jesus and Christians many I, I, I don't I take no delight in saying have deviated from that path and no longer following the path of Jesus even though you believe you are you know, I mean, when Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life he, either he is or he isn't so, but we've already, we've already discussed so, this haven't we so, so, no, but, no, but your I'm, own scholars what, say it's no, fiction no, no, well, what I'm saying is <laughs> you know we Christians should be you know guided by the truth and that's absolutely all. we're open I hope to be convinced by inshallah you know, inshallah truth elsewhere so well then you know, uh, it, well then but there we yeah, are yeah. but perhaps we, we will we will leave it there yeah because well, I, I, well, one other thing I okay. wanted to talk to you about because okay. I think many 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 years ago when I was in a rush more more than five years ago now so certainly well before the pandemic I think we had a little conversation possibly you gosh you got it, you got a good memory about about well <laughs> about the, the, the role of grace and law right so, am I right? I, actually, I have no recollection. Of, you have to remind me what yeah, I said. Did, did you, if you're the same Paul, I, uh, well, I'm half the man. I'm half the man I was. <laughs> you're certainly trimmer. Uh, that, that's a joke, by the way, not about anything yeah. else, but about my physical appearance. Yeah, yeah. Before you all get mistaken, I've lost a little bit of weight. Would you say that? that would you Would you say that the uh, the whole uh, Christian concept of uh, salvation by grace alone was that uh, that's Pauline and not a gospel understanding? Precisely. It's not okay. Jesus' teaching at all. Okay. And did we? Uh, I'm really searching back in my memory here. Did we? Were I we don't remember what we were, said. So. Were, were we discussing? On, yeah. I mean, since you brought up the rich young ruler. Yeah. All right. So your your understanding of that is is that a, that's a 
a demonstration of Jesus teaching salvation by works and not by grace. Is that you understand? When they're I, I, I don't like this antithesis between okay, faith okay, and okay, works okay. of grace and works. I think that is a very evangelical okay. way of putting it. I, I think uh, in Judaism, as in Islam, faith and works go together. But like, oh, well, but, 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 but like, yeah. well, yeah, but, yes, yeah. but for salvation. Uh, and, but, and you don't. You, if you grace. believe in sola fide, yeah, uh, but we don't believe in grace without works. Yeah. So right. You know, works must follow. Well, there may be we're more similar, but yeah. I, I think the Paul, the Paul's understanding of salvation through believing in that Jesus died and rose again for your sins, having faith in Jesus, is completely different. It's a different religion from the religion that Jesus himself, we can see, teach, taught. Okay. He didn't teach what Paul taught. Unfortunately, Christianity comes from Paul and others. It doesn't come from Jesus in these particular respects. In other ways, it does. I'm not saying there's complete discontinuity between Christianity and Jesus. You, you believe in many things that he did, in the importance of love and mercy and so on. I acknowledge that. Yeah, yeah. But on these issues, like the concept of God and how we're saved, I, I would argue that there is no continuity at all. But there is continuity between what Muslims believe and what Jesus taught. And we can go into that. But, 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 but in, ter in, in, in terms of the... Do I, you know, you, you, you may remember. But how are we saved? According to Jesus, how are we saved? Well, but when, you tell me. Where, well, I would say, did, did we not have. What did Jesus about teach? The, well, did, in the terms of the rich I don't remember what we said five years ago. Uh, yeah, well, have mercy on me. I think I did. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think I did. Fine, fine. <laughs> so, so, so I'm just. I'm just, I'm just five uh, years ago? Yeah, yeah. Here? I can't remember a conversation I had ten minutes ago, let alone five years ago. With respect to the Muslim brothers here, because I think you came up and said, I'm a white Muslim, and that was quite unique to me. All right. I wonder what the context of that was. But anyway, yeah, 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 but anyway. Um, I still am, so, by the so, way. Yeah, oh, I know. Um, okay. so, <laughs> so, Even though I'm half you, the man I was. Didn't you, but, <laughs> didn't you, didn't you, weren't you saying that um, your understanding of when, when, when the rich young ruler comes to Jesus? Yes. And he says... In which version? Mark, Mark. Because Mark. Right. Matthew changes yeah, Mark. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. go for Mark. Let's go for Mark. <laughs> so when he says, um, uh, good teacher, how yes. may I be saved? Yes. And Jesus says, I'm, I'm slightly paraphrasing here. So, and correct me if I get this wrong. I will, don't but, worry. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I, remember well, it, I remember it verbatim, by the way. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, okay, okay. Well, you, I, I remember so every you, word. You know, you know the law, and then he reminds him of the do not murder, adultery, do not. There are steal. five commandments yeah, he reminds yeah, them of, yeah. And but he, doesn't make, he doesn't mention the first four or the last. And then. Uh, and, what's the man and, then, say? and then the man says, all things that this I've kept since I was a boy. Correct. And Jesus looks at him and loves him. And, and then he says, one thing you lack. Yes. Uh, sell out all your possessions and then come and follow me. I, give, I tell you, but give them to the poor. Yeah, that's or, it. Or, or, get, get, go, or sell out your wealth and, and give your wealth to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. That's it. That's I agree. It. No, you, you remembered okay, it correctly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so that, that's an interesting answer. Now, Paul would never have given that answer to the same question. He would have said, believe in Jesus, death and resurrection of your sins, and then you will have faith. For okay. example, in Acts, in the, the Philippi, the, the jailer or Philippi episode, the, the jailer asked he, uh, uh, Paul and Peter, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. And the answer Paul gives is believe on the Lord Jesus, you and your family, and you will be saved. Now, this is a completely different answer to the answer that Jesus himself gave yeah. to the young guy. So we have to ask, of those two statements, which is closer to Islam? Well, and I, I tell you, Islam is a lot closer to the teaching of Jesus well, than Christianity is. Uh, apart from, I mean, I, I mean, this may be wrong, but I've always been taught that the Jews of Jesus today, they understood wealth as a blessing. So when, when you know, Mark is giving a portrait of the rich young ruler, he's saying, he's saying this, this is like the best that mankind can produce, you know. So he's he he's he, he runs up to Jesus, which just shows he's humble. He because he, uh, he has he's, he's, he's got a no self awareness because uh, that would be a humbling thing for a rich man to do. He throws himself at, he, at Jesus' knees, which is also humble. He's respectful. He calls Jesus Rabbi. He's uh, well, he flatters Jesus. Good well, teacher. Go, well, he oh, flatters him. Oh, Oh, he's brave because you know mm. people are trying to kill Jesus. And yet he's I have in a public. question, guys. Sorry to interrupt, but here before Yahweh as our witness was Jesus the name of the crucified Messiah. Hang on, hang on. Wait, hang on. I just want to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. So was Let's Jesus Christ's name? Hang on, hang on. We're, we're gonna. Was Jesus Christ's name, hang sir? On, hang on, we're gonna carry I'm gonna on with our. I'm gonna keep bugging until I get an answer. Was Jesus the name of the Messiah? Yes or no? I am so rude. Was Jesus the name of the Messiah, sir? Can you can you come in? Was anyone named Jesus crucified? I can leave real quick. You just tell me yes or no. 
was here before you. Do you have a chat with this gentleman here? Would you have a chat with him? the name of Jesus? No, no. I mean, would you have a chat with him? Jesus name challenge. Hashtag Jesus name challenge, which proves the name Lord Jesus is a translation from Satan's names, Baal and Isus or Jesus, which translates to Lord Jesus in English. So yeah, it's not your voice. It happens to the speakers. All your listeners. All your listeners. He's feedbacking on our thing. So was Jesus the name of the Messiah, sir? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Was Jesus the name of the Messiah? I don't know, he'll go away. You know what happens? Does, does that you, work? You know what happens um, if you know. deny him? Sorry about that. I'm not denying anything. Deny the Messiah I'm not denying anything. Men, Yahweh will he will deny you before Yahweh. We obviously Christians was do but we all believe that Jesus Messiah. was the Messiah, yes by no, the way, sir. obviously. We believe he was the Messiah, but not God. Was uh, yeah. Jesus so, the name um, of the never, crucified so, Messiah? Wait, 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 we, we both believe yeah, Jesus was the Messiah. But not God. You guys both believe Jesus is the crucified Messiah. So what about Yeshua? You deny Yeshua? Okay. It's going to be other questions about another question. He's pulling us in. I don't so let, I, I let us continue. With let's guy. continue his work. Can you change yeah, so, the name yeah, of the so, Father and Son into? So, I can't remember what you were saying. Oh, about Mark 17. Uh, Mark 17. Yeah. So you, you're going through about Jesus being approached by uh, a guy. Jesus is a false gospel, and every time you say that, you're a liar. I'm with you. You guys are preaching a false gospel. So, so of Lord so, Jesus, some English, so Latin, so-called Satan, yeah, 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 the God yeah, of the yeah. Catholics who so rape little when boys. He, By their fruits, when, you will know them. When he, so the, Catholics yeah, Mark, Mark who is rape making, little boys. Breaking a picture of him. That's Catholic the Church of so Jesus when you, who right. rape little boys. There's one huh? thing you lack. Yeah. Was Jesus the so name of the Messiah? The yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm from My Yahweh. understanding has always been I'm part that. of no religion. All these religions, they're Je all That is always comic, what Jesus says, because the one thing he lacked... Was Jesus his name? ...is give up salvation by works. And the his name, Yahshua, means Yahweh is, is salvation. The, uh, he preached the Old Testament of Yahweh. He prayed to Yahweh, they, and he called they, on they Yahweh they and was saved. Right, right. But you and guys are saying the name is Jesus, Mom and that's a lie. prefaces it with the little children that come up to him. Right, right. So we're we, oh, he said, little oh, children, oh, don't like, deceive them or tie a milestone around your neck. So we, we throw yourself that into that the sea. Is in sync with I'm coming back things. for you guys so, when you guys are done. So, so, and I'm going to so, ask you again, by Grace was Elaine. Jesus oh, the name of the Messiah? Yeah. Yeah. The he's, he's pointing yeah. out yeah. the man exactly. and the disciples. The name, yeah. his the name idea, Lord, his paradigm of salvation by works is mistaken. And, 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 let me get my train of thought. And therefore, and therefore, when he looks on the him is love him, loves him. It, it's to the man's benefit because he goes away sad. Right. So to some extent the pain the penny has dropped. So he, ben he, he, he goes away from Jesus better than when he arrived. Yeah, so when he absolutely. turns up and says, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when he, when he, when our understanding, when he turns up and says, what, what thing must I do to inherit eternal life? Yeah. He, possibly, and certain disciples think, this man has got the near perfect, this is as good as it gets from the human point of view. Yeah. He's got the almost perfect CV. And Jesus is going to say something like, or the disciples expect him to say something like, at last, welcome aboard, you're just the kind of guy I've been looking for. Just one little you know, work of super erogation, and you're with us. Just one little Hail Mary. I mean, you've got, a, you've got the most impressive you know, religious CV, but Jesus, when he says just one thing you like, he says your whole concept of salvation by works is wrong. Come and follow me, because the way I'm going is to the cross, and that's what we misunderstand. So that's a, that's why we, that's how we think. You know, Paul, is, is Jesus is. Well, when you say we, you mean well, you mean so, you mean all the Christian churches would oh, agree. No, with I mean you. evangelical Christians. Lots exactly, and who are a minority, of course, in terms of sure. Christians globally. So this is about not. I, I think this is. Um, a, I mean, you could, you could be. Have you heard that understanding? I used to be an evangelical Christian. Yes. Oh, so you had. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, but you don't, you don't buy that, <laughs> obviously. Uh, not anymore, because I don't think. Okay. What you're saying is possible, because you know I can't transport back in time and ask Jesus, did you actually mean what this evangelical says? He thinks yeah. you mean. But, you, you but, but no, hang on. But, but I, I, I'm not. It's a possible interpretation, but there, it's not the, it's not the obvious one or the only one. When I say it's not the obvious one, the natural, the plain meaning of the words are, uh, as we have recounted, uh, one Jew goes up to another Jew who he calls him good teacher. Yeah. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus denies he is good or God or divine. Why would he do that? Well, I, I think he, I, I think he is being. Um, 
uh, uh, quite typically Jesus in that he doesn't like these exalted titles. He's someone who doesn't like uh, to exalt himself. He's someone who's a humble Jew. So he's saying, you know, this language only belongs to God alone. It's like a Muslim would say, you know, he wanted, he was particularly pious, you know, using the names of God, you know, goodness, love and truth. No, well, this is, all goodness comes from God not really for me. It's a very pious, humble thing to do when done sincerely. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's what Jesus is doing now. That's my reading. And then he gives a very Jewish answer. Obey the commandments. And he, he gives five of them, as you say. Very Jewish. Because the, 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 the way to salvation is by obeying the law, the Jewish law, or the, the Sharia, as we would call it in Islam. That's the way of salvation. Um, it, in, in a second, uh, when I've just finished. Uh, and then I, have, I have, might have to go, actually. Um, so, uh, so the man then, the, the, the man, indeed. Oh, sorry, I've done it again. Um, uh, I'm getting used to it. Yeah, the hand's going to, the flesh is going to be worn away on your hand. Um, so the man, understandably, says, although perhaps a little less with humility I've obeyed all these laws I mean since I, it's not actually that difficult not to kill someone in my view you can actually obey well, most of the laws Jesus's, you yeah, know, yeah, you know, I don't mean that I, I mean the actual law itself okay. Jesus deepened the law interiorized oh, yeah, it sure, but he didn't absolutely. abolish it no, and that's the mistake Christians yeah. Christians normally make that mistake they think uh, Jesus abolished the law because that's what the Bible says Paul says that in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 15 the of the law, uh, he says uh, uh, the, the law with its command Armaments and ordinances has been abolished. In terms of its reign, uh, and, right. and, uh, and we, in terms of its it, 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 it's reign, in terms of its reign. Well, it's it, 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 no, not that type of R E I G N. No, it's quite sunny. Yeah. <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of its reign, in terms of the basis of salvation. Well, he says abolished. If you, if you want to trans, transform that into a to reign, that's yeah. fine. But abolishes that's, means yeah. it doesn't operate anymore for Christians. Well, that's all, that's but Jesus, it's obviously, so it's it's Jesus, but well, for Paul, so Jesus, it clearly was because in answer to the question, "What must I do to be saved?" He said, "Obey the law." But Paul says it's not as you say for salvation; it's been abolished. Here we have a, a a fundamental contradiction in the heart of the New Testament itself. Funny how it's been preserved even in the pages of the Bible. Within Matthew on the Matthew's Jesus and Paul on the other. But Continuing Mark chapter 10 here, um, verse 17 onwards. So then uh, the man says he obeyed all those. And Jesus says that he lacks one thing. One thing for what? For salvation. So this is really interesting. Because, he says one because to be Christians, with, you, you're, you're an exception here, by the way. Christians nearly always, because you're an exception, say, well, it wasn't really one thing because it was two things. Because it's like, um, give all your wealth and follow me. That's how you get saved. But Jesus didn't say, and follow no, me. He, no, you're, 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 I don't, I'm not criticizing. I agree with you. We're, we're in agreement. But Christians <laughs> normally don't say what you don't agree. And they'll say, no, 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 he meant two things. Give all your money to the poor, etc., and then come follow me. Yeah. No, no, no. Jesus didn't say for salvation, you just have to give this man, give all your wealth to the poor, and then you will have treasure in heaven. So the man had died that night, having given his wealth to the poor, according to Jesus, he would have gone to heaven. Now, at, at no point would he have then put his faith in Jesus as his Lord and as his personal Lord and Saviour who died for him on the cross. Paul's Gospel in Romans and Galatians and, and so on. At no point would he have said that because Jesus hadn't died on the cross for his sins, as you would understand it, at all. He would simply have given up his wealth to the poor and obeyed the law. So here we have a capsule, I think an historically authentic passage. And by the way, in my reading of the biblical scholars, they overwhelmingly think this passage is historical precisely because it goes against the later grain of Christian belief. Christians later on believe that Jesus died for their sins and only through faith in Jesus could you be saved. But Matthew's Mark's Jesus doesn't say that. So it's because well, it's so... He did, I would say he did. That's... Indeed, but you're, again, you're un unusual and exceptional. And I, pray, I, I, I commend you for that, sir. Um, <laughs> Praise but, the but Christians <laughs> don't usually accept that. They would say, Paul and Jesus are teaching the same thing but they're not. So the question is, do we follow the religion of Jesus or the religion about Jesus? I would say that Muslims follow the religion of Jesus, 
Christians follow the religion about Jesus, where they put him at the center of their spiritual life, whereas Muslims and Jesus put God at the center of their life. And they are very different beings. One is a created man, Jesus denying his God, remember, in that very passage. God himself is the uncreated, eternal source of all life, who created Jesus and Muhammad and Moses, peace be upon them all. So I invite you, sir, to Islam, the authentic religion of Jesus, and forsake the corruptions what time, what time of later.